My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, I am Nissa. I am in Phoenix, Arizona. I love Phoenix. Yeah. I love Phoenix because of the gas prices and hotel prices and the rental prices. You can <laughs> really get decent money. <laughs> it was so crazy. I, I got to tell you this. It was like four years ago, for the first time I went to Arizona, I went to Scottsdale. Literally, I did not believe how much cheap the gas was. I thought it was a joke. I thought someone was pulling a prank on me. I was like, are you sure? Like, I went inside, I paid, I put the gas. I was like, are you sure? This is what the price is. Is it a special just for this? They're like, no, it's been like that for a month. I'm like, are you sure? Like, this is good gas. I can put it in my car. Literally, they were making fun of me being a retarded person. Like, I literally was asking questions if the prices were right. So that was my experience in Arizona. That just tells you how much I don't get out of L.A. Yeah, it's a good place to live. <laughs> Definitely. So let's dive into it. I know that you have had a lot of, uh, you have had your own journey, especially with fitness. Um, and I know you've lost a lot of weight. You've done a lot of stuff and you've been able to do a lot. My question is this. How does that relate to business? If I'm an entrepreneur, because you stuck through it, I was watching some of your, your posts on Instagram and, and you stuck with it. How do we apply that same principle in business? It's really all about your level of commitment because um, there's so many flashy trends that come, like you might start one diet and then um, maybe you're getting some success and then a new flashy trend comes out there and then you want to just hop to the next one. So I think in business, they call it shiny object syndrome, which I am sometimes a victim of where I'm following one strategy and then the next one promises these big results. So I jump to that and it's the same thing with diets. I struggled with yo-yoing weight for more than 20 years and a lot of that was really just hopping from diet to diet um, because something wasn't working the way I thought it should I wasn't patient enough um, I didn't want to put in the required effort all the time and so I think that's a lot like business like sometimes you just have to do the work and you have to be patient and you can't just hop from strategy to strategy it just it won't work what helps you not to do that because I mean everybody we all have that problem. So what are some of the remedies for it? Um, so in business, I'm definitely still figuring that out. I think I bought like three courses over the past three days. Um, but with the weight loss, it actually came down to my digestion. So I spent 20 years yo-yo dieting and all of that dieting really screws you up. It um, makes it so you're not producing enough stomach acid, you're not breaking down your food, it makes it so you're not digesting your fat well. So when you try to go on any diet, it's actually, it's going to be really hard to stick with it. So just like in business, um, you know, sometimes you can just white knuckle it and do it on your own, but sometimes you actually need tools. And in my case, it was working with my body chemistry, eating the right foods that were right for me, instead of just following the next flashy trend. Um, and also, you know, using those tools to help me have more stomach acid, to help my bile flow better so I was able to lose weight. And that's the same thing in business. Like a lot of um, people just, they want to get into it. They want to figure it out themselves because they don't want to pay people to teach them what to do. They just want to hop on Instagram and follow what everyone else is doing. And that's a good way to stay stuck when you're just following the crowd because, um, that's what's working for other people. You know, that just, it doesn't make you stand out. It makes you get the same results as everyone else. And so if you want to get results that are right for you, both in business and in diet, you definitely need to look for help, seek out mentors that know what they're doing. Because in both business and in diet, there's a lot of people that say they know what they're doing. They say they know how to teach you. And um, they haven't really had that success themselves. So you definitely want to look for people that have had success and figure out what they're doing, learn from them. And if that take, if that means you're buying a course or, you know, you're buying, hiring a coach to help you, I think all of that is really helpful than just trying to white knuckle it and figure it out yourself because eventually you're going to get frustrated and you're going to give up. I agree with that. So that, that creates a couple of questions for me. How do you pick the mentor and 
I don't know. My opinion on buying courses is different than yours. So I don't want to ruin it for you because you just bought some, so I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm not going to not gonna say nothing, but I, I would do it different. The way I do it when I want to learn a new topic, I'm a YouTuber. Not doing YouTube, but consuming YouTube. Mm -hmm. I typically spend three to five days throughout the week on one topic, one subject, and I find all of the authorities in that place, in that space. Then I'm going to look, see which ones are doing. I'm a big fan of getting closer as far as this thing goes with people that are actually doing it themselves. I rather re learn real estate, for example, for someone who's doing it today versus someone who did it 20 years ago and they're talking about it today. So it's a little bit different when you pick the right coach. What is your approach in picking out a mentor or coach? Um, I don't think it's too far off from what you're talking about because um, so if you just go on YouTube and you just leave it at that, there's a million different people, especially. So let's talk keto. That's what I follow. There are a million different people that have a million different messages when it comes to keto. Some say you need to cut calories. Some say you need to eat more calories. Some say you need to eat low fat, high fat. So how do you know you could be watching all these videos, but you don't know who's right. And so I think one of the biggest things is like you said, you need to find someone who's doing it now, who's in the trenches and who is really, you know, in the business working on it now. So the courses that I take, they're not courses that have been out there, they're stale. These are people that are in the trenches, they're doing it every day and they are teaching you from their experience. So I think taking too many of the wrong courses or following too many of the wrong mentors would be a bad idea. But, you know, look for someone that you resonate. Make sure that um, you want to listen to that person because if you're going to be watching all these videos or, you know, following them, you want to make sure you like them. Like, you don't want to watch videos. That's totally, that's a big deal. So I always go listen to their audio and I want to make sure that their voice because I did take this one course, oh my God, for life of me, I couldn't get beyond like 10 minutes. I just could not listen to this guy. Yeah. So bored, it was like, eh. So anyway. Here's, but, here's but, a big secret to the people that you find on YouTube. So a lot of their courses, a lot of the information that they put on YouTube is actually the stuff that's in their paid courses. The only reason that you're paying to get their courses is because they put it in an outline that's easy to follow for you to get results. So if you wanna take the time to figure it out yourself, you can follow one person and you can put the pieces together. But if you want to take a shortcut, if you really resonate with someone and you like the way they teach, you like what they're teaching, um, that's when the courses come in handy because they put it, you know, in a line where you can follow it and get results like that. Yeah, no, that, that part, in order to save time, definitely that, that should be the case. If you already know that this is the person, I need to get the knowledge, you just go. And sometimes, you know, one of the reasons why I know a lot of my friends are part of it and they buy a course, they actually don't even go through the course. They just want to be part of a Facebook group so yeah. they could ask questions because they're like, I know the materials, I know the content, but I'm stuck at certain point with certain things where I need an expert to answer. I just put it in there and get the answers and then that's it. So a lot of them don't even go through the course. They just, they want to make sure that, you know, closing the proximity with the person who's teaching it. Here's my other question. If somebody wants to just get healthy, I'm not talking about losing weight because a lot of people confuse losing. I was confused for a lot of time. I thought healthy and losing weight were the same thing. I realized that that's not the case. What are two or three tips that I could do implement today in my diet that you think over a long period of time, it's going to have effect. I may not lose a couple of pounds in a week, but that's not the that's not the goal that I'm striving for. So yeah, I mean, when I talk keto, a lot of people think weight loss, but I'm really in it for the health gain. So over those 20 years that I struggled with weight loss, I had chronic headaches almost daily. I had anxiety, depression, acne, like basically if there's a chronic health problem you could think of, I had it. And a lot of that is due to excess dieting. So if you want to get healthy, you need to get rid of the diets, get rid of the fad diets because they're not helping you. And the whole reason that keto is big right now and the reason that it works is because it's a real food diet. So one thing that you can do to really change the way that um, your health is, is to eat real foods. And a lot of people, like we're so used to these processed junk food, um, like protein bars or protein shakes, a lot of those 
people will tell you they're healthy. They have a lot of junk inside of them. Your body doesn't know what to do with it. So they store them in your fat cells. They make you unhealthy long term. So if you want to be healthy long term, you need to eat the real food. And that is food that grows in the ground that comes from animals. So like meat, eggs, nuts, cheeses, things like that. Foods that are easily found in nature and, you know, made up of one ingredient or a few ingredients. You don't want like all these chemicals that you don't know how to pronounce. And that was my biggest mistake for a long time. Because it's not even I, about pronoun I can't even read some of them. Yeah. You look at the cereal box and I'm like, what is it? Like, I'm not like, really? Like, does it? So th that's why, like, if you can't read it, if you can't, if you're having a, if you have to look at it, that's the way. I, if I have to read, read it, go back and forth twice on the same word, and you don't know what it is, and if it's not on the table of element, like you definitely should not be putting that in your mouth. So, would you say it has a lot to do with diet, not exercise? Yeah, it is. Um, so, losing weight and keeping it off long term is probably about ninety percent diet. It is probably the other 9% is more lifestyle factors like keeping stress low and getting enough sleep. And exercise actually has very little to do with it. Actually, um, so I do like exercise for a healthy lifestyle. I think it keeps you healthy. But if you're doing it just to lose weight, it's not going to actually take you very far. And if you do it too much, you can actually gain weight from this. So I, I did hours of cardio for years and it kept my body inflamed from too much cardio. So people say calories in versus calories out with exercise. It's not true. You definitely are pissing off a lot of people right now, I can tell you. I can feel the energy coming from that side. So that's the thing. You want the coaches that get results. And I lost 110 pounds. I've kept it off for three years. More than 95% of people put the weight back on within the first five years, put all the weight back on plus more. I've lost over 110 pounds. I've kept it off for three years. I love my lifestyle, so I have no you know, reason to gain it back. So, I mean, people could get mad, but I'm just showing you what works. I'm showing you what's keeping you out of the $80 billion diet industry. Those are the people that are gonna get mad, the people that wanna profit from keeping you stuck in that cycle. <laughs> But is it that difficult? I mean, I got to do more research before I ask this question, but I'm going to ask it. Anyway. Is it really difficult to come up with a protein bar that's, eat? I mean, real, like, is that difficult to take real food and put it in a bar? Like, is that really that difficult? Like, nobody has ever, like, I need to dive into it and figure this thing out. Like, can somebody figure it out? Like, is it that <laughs> difficult? So there are companies that have done it, like Kind, they have a Kind bar, and that's mostly real food. So um, while you do want to eat more real foods than not, if you need something on a go, just find something like a Kind bar that has more real food ingredients and not all those things that you can't pronounce. The problem is with the protein bars, they just... A lot of them become way overly processed. People are just focused on the macros. And, you know, when you just focus on that, you're probably not going to have long-term success. Hmm. That's a big industry. That's not. I mean, that's a whole entire aisle on on in supermarkets. We see from end to end, and that's all you see. So somebody's misinforming people. Now, my my. So, so are you writing a book about this? Do you have a course? What's up with that? So, how are you educating people? Is it just through Instagram? How how are you doing this? So I actually have four books on Amazon. So if you just search my name, which is Nissa Gron, you can find um, four different books that will help you, not just with keto, but low carb, digestion, intermittent fasting. I teach all of it. We also have courses that I put together. You can find those at eatingfatisthenewskinny.com. And I also have, so when I originally was losing weight, I had a mentor that I found that helped me. I read his book. And over the course of losing weight, I just got to know him. And he's now actually my business partner. So we actually run a membership together. We have a podcast called Chat the Fat Podcast. We have new episodes every Tuesday. Um, but we also run a membership. So we have that community for people. We have the right research so you can figure out what's right for your body. Because nothing's going to work. Like, keto worked for me. That doesn't mean keto would work for you. Um, so the point of our courses and our membership is to help people figure out what works for them, not only to lose weight, but the bigger problem is keeping it off because so many people, it's, it's kind of easy to lose weight, but keeping it off, that's really the hard part. I think it's a lifestyle change. I think you can't go back to what you were doing before. I think with that, you have to have that 
paradigm shift, you have to have those shifts in your habits and in your daily routine. If those things change, then you're going to have a higher ratio of success versus not changing it. So, all right. So that's, so you got books and everything else online. Yes. In order for me or someone else to keep it off, what helped you the most? Was it the mindset? Was it the coach? Was it the, the actual loss of weight? What was it that kept you not going back? Um, so like you said just a minute ago, it's actually making it a lifestyle. So when a lot of people go on diets, they're so quick to just want that quick fix. Like they want the weight gone and they'll figure out the rest when they're done. But if you're not doing things that you actually want to do, like keto, I love it because the food is so good. But if you're eating some cardboard diet where you hate the food and it's not something you're you're going to continue when you're done, then you're not going to keep the weight off. So I think that's important. I think also you have to keep researching because even though I hit my goal weight, I don't just poof automatically stay there. Like I still have to do work to keep it off. And what worked for me yesterday won't necessarily work for me tomorrow. Your body changes. Um, I don't know if you know this, but someone like me who struggled with weight for 20 plus years, once I hit my goal weight, it takes me up to nine years. My body will fight for nine years to get back to that, that higher set weight. So my body is going to keep fighting me. So I have to keep researching. I have to stay in that supportive community to find the stuff that really works. So I, I just think, you know, making it a lifestyle, but also don't give up on the research. I think that's so important. Definitely. I agree with that. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Um, Give them your Instagram handle one more time because there they'll find your link to the to the books. So give yep. them the handle one more time. Yep, it is eating fat is the new skinny. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. Hopefully we can do more videos with you. All right. Thanks for having me. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.